We have to get to the bottom of this. A cargo ship hasn't taken out a bridge in decades. And a ship, as far as we can tell, has never sustained a power failure before a bridge knocked down. We need answers. And someone has to pay. The Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, Maryland, has collapsed. All indications from what we know so far are that this was not a terrorist attack or an attack of any kind. President Joe Biden has pledged that the federal government will provide the funds to rebuild it. And yet we are seeing conspiracy theory after conspiracy theory about the collapse of this bridge for many of the usual, usual suspects. And as is often the case, we are led to ask the question, what's in it for them in trying to convince others that this was a terrorist attack? And the answer is quite simply, it feeds the pre existing agenda that they've already determined is what they're going to talk about in the absence of being able to bring forward any coherent, substantive, or beneficial package of ideas for helping the average person. Let's start with some examples of this. It's important to remember that much of what you are going to hear, there is no evidence of whatsoever. We will talk about facts related to the collapse, including, for example, that the U.S. Coast Guard has suspended its search for six individuals who are lost. We will talk about that later on or on the bonus show if we don't get to it. But understand that what what I'm about to play for you, there's no evidence for any of this stuff. But these things are getting millions and tens of millions of clicks and views. It started very quickly with Maria Bartiromo on Fox News attempting to connect the collapse of the bridge in Baltimore to the so-called wide open border in an attempt to somehow blame Joe Biden. Let me also get your take on what's going on in terms of world affairs. Uh, the White House has issued a statement on this saying that there's no indication of a nefarious intent in the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. The ship involved in the collapse of the bridge is 948 feet long, uh, called the Dolly, a Singaporean flagged container. But of course, you've been talking a lot about the potential for wrongdoing or potential for foul play given the wide open border. That is why you have been so adamant. Why has the Republicans had such a hard time securing this border? The president says he's not going to take his uh, executive action. You know that. Well, we all have to stand together. We have to say that that it takes 60 votes to pass anything in the Senate. There you go. We got to stand together. No actual evidence. Understand it. Zero actual evidence linking the bridge to the border. And in fact, I would I would go further one of the few presidents in recent history who really has the credibility to say, oh, this is something we can deal with. And by the way, I've been putting forth infrastructure funds to not only repair roads and replace lead pipes, but also to make our bridges modern and get up to date on maintenance so that these sorts of things wouldn't happen. If anything, we should be looking to Biden and saying, hey, it seems like Biden's right about the need to pour money into some of these things rather than, well, Biden's open border must connect to this somehow. Right. Right. Here's Matt Schlapp on Newsmax saying he's not an expert, but drug addled employees and covid lockdowns may be to blame for the bridge collapse. But what kind of questions do you want to see answered, Matt? Well, you know, as I said, you look at our critical infrastructure and I, I'm one of these people that believes we've never fully come out of all the lockdowns and the right and the covid issues. And you this is still because of covid lockdowns that basically didn't exist. Look, at, whether you look at our air traffic controllers where we have critical mission problems with filling slots, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm no expert on what's going on on the seas. But all I would say is, is that uh, if you talk to employers in America, they'll tell you that uh, filling slots with employees who aren't drug addled is a very huge problem. So I'm making no <laughs> specific charges here because we don't know. Right. But, right. Uh, you know, anybody who flies in America can see that you're constantly waiting on a tarmac somewhere for some crew to show up. There's mm -hmm. more uh, maintenance problems than we've ever had, which I think are euphemisms for the problems. By the way, everything he's listed so far are problems at corporations. But I think the key line here was I'm no actual expert in this. And of course, the idea that it's always too soon to talk about politics when it comes to gun safety. It doesn't matter if the last I mean, look, in the United States, it's never been too long, actually, since the last mass shooting, because they happen constantly. But it's always too soon to interject politics. It's always too soon to inject partisanship. And yet here, when we have one side that doesn't want to do infrastructure spending, one side that's doing it, 
they still somehow find a b way to immediately. I mean, this was before the Coast Guard search was even over for potential survivors, and he's injecting politics into it by blaming COVID woke, uh, COVID lockdowns, or wokeness. We'll hear DEI blamed in a moment. Here's Fox News' Jesse Waters, and he says to his viewers, "Don't fall." for the official story on the bridge. OK, well, the bridge has never had train tracks, so I don't know what he's talking about, but there will be more where that came from in the next week. Made up stories, misdirection and blame games, but don't fall for it. We have to get to the bottom of this. A cargo ship hasn't taken out a bridge in decades and a ship, as far as we can tell, has never sustained a power failure before a bridge knocked down. We need answers and someone has to pay. This 30? is always the if it hasn't happened before or recently to this particular ship, then it must be made up. No, I don't believe anything I'm being told about covid because it's been like a hundred years since something like this happened. Well, yeah, it's called a hundred year pandemic for a reason. It happens roughly every hundred years. No, no, no. It doesn't sound like anything I've lived through, so it can't possibly be real. But they put forward no evidence whatsoever only circumstantial questions and conspiracy theories on Newsmax. Victor Davis Hansen blamed the Baltimore bridge collapse on diversity hiring code for brown people. We don't know the exact relation to cause and effect, but we do know this. That the world is much more interconnected. It's much more fragile than it ever has been. It's much more sophisticated and it demands an ever greater level of expertise. But just at the time, that we're building bigger and bigger and more dangerous ships or we're, we're assembling longer and longer trains that derail like we saw at East Palestine with more and more toxic. We're not upping our game as far as increasing the level of expertise and especially Eric meritocracy. Ah. So we're not hiring necessarily the best people. We used to say we're going to hire the best people regardless of their color, their skin, their sexual orientation. Now we're saying, well, we may uh, hire the best people, but more importantly, or is their ideology or their ethnicity or their gender or their sexual orientation. And unfortunately, it's the by the way, ethnicity, ethnicity. If you're going to be a known racist, you should at least get the word ethnicity right. But anyway, ethnicity or ethnicity, notwithstanding, no evidence whatsoever that DEI diversity hiring or any of this hiring gay people had anything to do with what happened in Baltimore. And then here's Laura Ingraham on Fox News defending the conspiracy theorists, saying, listen, it makes sense that we'd be getting all of these conspiracy theories. But why is it that so many Americans following this collapse right. believe that the Biden team isn't telling us the whole truth? Axios today bemoaning the situation, writing that misinformation runs rampant after Baltimore Bridge collapse. True. Theories about whether hostile actors were involved, questions about economic terrorism, and even wilder speculation I won't go into tonight. But these ideas don't spring out of nowhere. Oh. They grow and they fester in situations where either the facts are hard to square with reality or where those in charge themselves have proven to be not credible. There you go. I mean, listen, what we're being told by people we can't trust doesn't square with reality. So it's natural that people would be skeptical and weaponized disinformation would be spread. It's simply natural. A couple more. These are not videos. These are from Twitter. Andrew Taint and Alex Jones piling on with Taint saying, quote, this ship was cyber attacked. Lights go off and it deliberately steers towards the bridge supports. Remember, what we know is it lost power and kept steering in the direction it was going. He goes on. Foreign agents of the USA attack digital infrastructures. Nothing is safe. Black Swan event imminent. And Alex Jones quoting taint and adding looks deliberate to me. A cyber attack is probable. World War three has already started. So, of course, the truth is officials have said there is simply no evidence that this was intentional. There is no evidence that it was an act of terrorism. This is all being investigated. It appears the ship lost propul propulsion, uh, filed a, a, a mayday, and uh, all evidence right now is consistent with that official story. Now, if that changes, 
then I will bring it to you. But this is all what happens when you create a vacuum of sanity. You eliminate sanity, you eliminate facts, you eliminate any policy. And all you have is, I don't know, there was a bridge collapse. How about we try to blame it on Biden and the hiring of supposedly unqualified gay and black people? That's what it comes down to. And I know it sounds crazy to hear it summarized that way, but that's fundamentally what it is. There is no evidence for any of the claims they're making. If any such evidence should surface, and uh, I, I'm not making a pun, but if any such evidence should surface, I will let you know. The household products you buy every week impact the environment. 30 million trees are destroyed every year for toilet paper in the US alone. Our sponsor, Real, makes a sustainable toilet paper, contains no trees, it uses 100% bamboo. Real's paper is certified by the Forest Stewardship Council, meaning they are responsibly harvesting bamboo grass that's used for their paper. And bamboo toilet paper is softer and stronger than regular toilet paper. It's a win for everybody, including the planet. And while regular toilet paper is wrapped in plastic as well, real papers packaging is fully plastic free and compostable. Real paper partners with one tree planted with every box of real that you buy. They are funding reforestation efforts around the country. So unlike the other toilet paper that cuts down trees, real paper doesn't use trees and is helping to actively plant trees. I have real toilet paper on a subscription so I don't run out. The subscription gives you an extra discount as well. Go to realpaper.com slash Pacman and use the code Pacman for 30 percent off your first order and free shipping. The link is down below.